Hello there, my fellow battle brothers, and welcome, huzzah, to the second Space Marine video of this week. Since I didn't want to break the holy tradition of chapter videos on Saturdays, I have made, like I promised in my last Carcharodons video, an episode about a much more obscure chapter. These guys are known as the Knights of the Raven, and despite their looks, symbology, and fuck it, their name, it still took the Imperium quite a while to realize they were successors of the brooding Corvus Corax. Also, since they are a rather obscure chapter, there aren't many artworks or minis about them, so I do apologize about that. Either way, I am your host, the Grim Dark Narrator, and without further ado, let us still learn a few things about them, shall we? The Knights of the Raven is a Loyalist Codex Astartes compliant Space Marine chapter of a later founding sometime in the later half of the 38th millennium. Due only to the coincidence of similar iconography and title, the Knights of the Raven are assumed to be a chapter founded during a later founding using Raven Guard gene stock. Over the millennia, the Adeptus Terra has only seen fit to found fewer and fewer successor chapters from the Raven God's limited genetic material, as unfortunately, the Gene Seed has continued its gradual deterioration. The Knights of the Raven are one of only a handful of Raven God successor chapters to be founded in the later millennia of the 40k setting. However, in the short time since their birth, they have already proven their valor in hundreds of engagements across many war zones. The fortress monastery of the Knights of the Raven is on the feudal world of Korolax, renamed upon the chapter's founding in honor of the Primarch. To the inhabitants of this bleak place, the Knights of the Raven are mythological figures. They appear to their odd populace only once every 13 years, when their emissaries descend from the heavens to spirit away the victors from the blood tourneys held in their honor. In 744 of M41, after joining forces to defeat the Alpha Legion warband responsible for the Redemption Rebellion, the Knights of the Raven and the Aurora chapter swore a bitter feud against each other, blaming the other for their grievous losses. But more on that in a minute. In penance for shedding the blood of fellow Astartes, they are currently fighting a guerrilla war against the Tyranids of the remaining splinters of High Fleet Kraken. Some other notable campaigns that they took part in include The Jagan Insurrection At the outset of the 41st millennium, the Imperial Hive World of Jagan rose in revolt. The roots of the rebellion lay in resentment at what were felt to be excessive demands for tithed troops to fight in the campaigns against the great tyrant of Yaga. These flames of resentment were fanned by subversive elements in the population, leading to outright rebellion. The Knights of the Raven chapter acted quickly to crush this rebellion, which was quickly suppressed everywhere with the exception of Jagan Hive Secundus. It was here that the rebellion had started, and where the rebels were strongest. The Knights of the Raven soon found themselves embroiled in a protracted siege against a tenacious and well-dug-in foe. There are no records that establish who first developed the Hellstorm combined fire tactic that was employed by the Knights of the Raven as part of the campaign. All that can be said with certainty is that it was an effective tactic that was quickly adapted by the Land Raider Redeemer squadrons throughout the chapter. This tactic relied on split-second timing to launch a simultaneous attack by all the Flamestorm cannons in the squadron against a single target point. The resulting inferno of fire was so intense that nothing was capable of withstanding it, no matter how well armored or protected it might be. Just within weeks of the tactic being developed, Hive Secundus fell, and the rebels capitulated. The Redemption Rebellion 
The Knights of the Raven and the Aurora Chapter fought a joint campaign to defeat the vile Alpha Legion. But soon after declaring victory, both chapters swore a bitter rivalry against one another. The Unseen Spears, the Reclusium Command Squad of the Knights of the Raven's second company, were responsible for escalating tensions between themselves and their battle brothers from the Aurora Chapter. Space Marines of the Aurora Chapter accused Chaplain Gyvus of the Unseen Spears of cultivating superstition and fanaticism on their own homeworld. The Unseen Spears took this as a grave insult to the Chapter's honor and came to blows with the Aurora Chapter. It was Marnius Kalgar himself, Chapter Master of the Ultramarines, who intervened with an impassioned speech. He suggested, as a penance, that the entire Knights of the Raven chapter be dispatched to fight against High Fleet Kraken. The Unseen Spears immediately led the salvation of the death world of Valix V, where the Knights of the Raven and their allies slaughtered thousands upon thousands of gene stealers. The Unseen Spears endure to this very day and with their chaplain at the helm, they lead blistering strikes against the Kraken's splinter fleets in an effort to bring honor back to the chapter. The Achilles Crusade The Knights of the Raven were represented in the war zones of the Jericho Ridge and the ranks of the Achilles Crusade by a small task force that emerged unheralded through the Jericho Maw Warp Gate in 814 of M41. This small battle force had fought many campaigns alongside other, larger forces, drawn from a variety of brother chapters. As far as can be determined, the Knights of the Raven consider it their solemn duty to commit forces to the Crusade, for to stand by as others fight and die in the name of the Emperor is a far darker shame than any defeat that could be suffered at the hands of the enemy. The Zeist Campaign the Zeist Campaign was a military conflict fought between the Imperium and the Tau Empire in the Zeist sector of the Ultima Segmentum at the end of the 41st millennium. This campaign ran concurrently with Abaddon the Despoiler's 13th Black Crusade and an assault on Imperial space by the Tyranids of High Fleet Leviathan. While the Imperium's military was heavily involved with preventing the breakout of the forces of Chaos from the Cadian Gate, on the other side of Imperial space, the opportunistic and treacherous Tau forces took advantage of this distraction to rapidly expand their territory. With the victory of the Imperium, the Zeist campaign marked the end of the Tau Third Sphere expansion. As far as the Death Watch service is concerned, a small number of the Knights of the Raven Battle Brothers have since taken the Apocryphon Oath and began a vigil of the Long Watch. As with the deployment of the chapter's main force in the Jericho Ridge, it appears this undertaking is a matter of honor, ensuring that the chapter bore its own fare of the trials and tribulations of the endless war against the Xenos. A couple of notable Knights of the Raven brothers include Librarian Tyrannus A battle brother of the Knights of the Raven, who was engaged upon his third vigil of the Long Watch, Tyrannus was instrumental in an action to track down and corner an infiltrator within the Plasma Exchanger of Watch Fortress Ariok. A gifted wielder of the Psychic Arts, Tyrannus had been able to sense something of the enemy's presence even when other librarians had not. It is tragic indeed that brother Tyrannus fell alongside his brothers, for otherwise he might have been able to pass on how he did so, and something of the mystery of the whole event might have been dispelled. However he achieved it, it appears that the librarian was only able to estimate the approximate coordinates of a nearby infiltrator, for when confronted with the saboteur masquerading as a member of his own kill team, his powers were unable to distinguish one from another. Ultimately, it was the intuition of brotherhood that unveiled the intruder, when Watch Captain Paratos declared which was the enemy. Though his unusual power abandoned him at the end, Librarian Tyrannus saw the truth of the Watch Captain's judgment, 
fully acceding to his subsequent order to unseal the plasma exchange. Sergeant Sala Sergeant Sala of the Knights of the Raven chapter also served in the Death Watch. He was the one who brought the famous Signum Array, known as Sala's Unkindness, to the Xenos Hunters. The origin and pattern of this highly advanced Signum Array is unknown but records listed as with a long and glorious history since it arrived at Watch Fortress Ariok with Brother Sergeant Sala of the Knights of the Raven. By virtue of the advanced fire coordination capability granted by the Signum, Sala's kill team was able to slay an entire heretic army on the fringes of the Hadex Anomaly, despite the army numbering in the thousands and the kill team was running short of ammunition. The Knights of the Raven's power armor is painted burnished silver with black trim, aquila, and markings. The chapter may follow the Raven God's custom of having the trim color on the right shoulder indicate a specific company. The color of the left knee plate indicates to which company an Astartes belongs. The squad specialty symbol, Assault, Tactical, Devastator, or Veteran, is indicated on the right shoulder plate with the squad number centered in the middle of it. The Knights of the Raven chapter badge is a stylized black raven, identical in aspect to the Raven God's own badge centered on a field of silver. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about the Knights of the Raven chapter for today. Are you a fan of these guys? Or maybe the better question would be, did you even know about these guys until now? Let us know in the comments below. Was this video informative or entertaining? In that case, please click the like button and subscribe for more content. Thank you very much for watching, and I wish you all a beautiful day or evening. The Emperor Protects.